Today's episode is sponsored by Mission Aware. Mission Aware sells great reformed goods with a biblical and theological bent. Head on over to missionaware.com slash docandevo and save $10 off all orders over $50 today. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, elder candidate at Redeemer Fellowship. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Sunday fun day. It's the Lord's Day. The Lord's Day. Had a great it. time. Uh, we both worshiping. preached. We both preached today. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Not at the same church. No. No, no. That'd be that'd weird. to blow the roof off. Oh, I don't think they can handle it. No, man. The Jofo together preaching? Would we raise the roof? We would raise, woo, woo, we do that. <laughs> so where were you preaching today, Jimmy? I was preaching at the Source Church in Oswego, Illinois. Uh, Robert Livingston is the pastor over there. Yep. And what, what is that, like some Assemblies of God church? No, it was Acts was 29. It, so, oh, it's an Acts 29 church. It was Acts 29. Oh, I didn't know that. That's the only reason why I did it. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know, Robert. That's cool, man. So were, were, were the people good? You meet people the people? People were great, man. People were very no, like, kind. No, like, like, what was wrong with that place? What, wait, was it, what was how, wrong? how messed up was that place? Was it really bad? Oh, man, they were too humble. Oh, I hate that. They loved Jesus too much. <laughs> <laughs> great people, weird. though, right? Huh? Great people, great right? Great people. Yeah, really nice, awesome. really kind, really courteous. I think before people realized... Uh, that I was the guest preacher. Oh yeah, people were always coming up and saying hello, introducing. Can themselves. I help you, sir? Can I help what, you? What do you have business here? Today? Oh no, it wasn't like that. <laughs> it was like you know, do you know where the washroom is? Do you need some water? There's some coffee right over here. This will be your chaperone. This will be your <laughs> chaperone. <laughs> <laughs> but the worship was great. Uh, even that morning, or this morning, um, as I was getting ready to head out the door, I was putting some you know, final touches down and got an email from some of their staff just saying, cool. hey, man, praying for you right now. That's awesome. You know, So, yeah, they were just really kind. They took me aside. They prayed for me uh, even before the service and um, just really kind, great-hearted people. How about you? How did uh, this morning went? You were in Luke. Yeah, yeah, we're in Luke. We'll be in Luke for a long time. Yeah, it was it was really I mean, man, I love every Lord's Day here. Even if I feel like my sermon kind of falls flat for, you know, on t- in terms of delivery reasons, um, which I didn't feel like that today. I felt like it was a pretty normal sermon for me. And that's pretty rare um, for it to go flat. Well, it feels like that way to me probably more often. But anyway, uh, yeah, Christ-centered worship, man, mm. triune God lifted up in our songs and our readings. Man, Jeremy just killed it with the reading, scripture reading. Oh, I love when Jeremy reads, man. And it's so good. And, uh, yeah, so lots of good stuff. We had a lot of visitors today. And, uh, yeah, preach the gospel. So um, hopefully Amen. people were um, were encouraged. And uh, now we're, you know, the kids are in youth group. Uh, the older yep. ones are. It's it's the it's the early evening, and we're well. Where are we, Jimmy? Tell everybody where we're at. We're at the church. Uh, yeah, we we're smoking at the church right That's now, right. guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it, it, not breaking any laws. Not breaking any laws. We're smoking outside on the porch. On the porch. We, we have a, like took... a back porch at the church. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, we just brought the mics out. Brought here. Brought the mics out. Brought everything, and uh, got all set up. And so. If you hear any background noise, that's just the way it is. Yeah, and uh, something's weird with my voice. I don't know what it is, but it sounds raspy. Different. Yeah, is it raspy? Yeah, it's a little raspy. It sounds yeah. like yeah. you haven't been getting sleep, it and or like... you've been yelling a lot at your kids since your wife's been out of town. Well, I wouldn't call it yelling. I like to call it barking. Oh, no, I was at your house yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's there was, there was a little bit of kid drama a couple times. Mm-hmm. You know, every once in a while I have to, you know, exercise my vocal cords like a little bit. Like when you threaten to pop their... Their, uh, what was it? The, the balls? What are those things? Yeah, they're those the giant rubber balls that are inflatable, and they all started fighting over them. And I said, Listen, if you guys can't control yourselves, I'm going to pop it and throw I'll, them in the I'll, trash. I'll just, I'll just throw them away. I'll just take my knife, I'll pop all four of them and throw them in the trash. You guys <laughs> better learn how to treat those those balls. Cra- and you know what? Mm, they, they got they, a lot better. That's right. Yeah. Listen. They knew it. They're like, Oh, daddy's going to pop them. So apologize for the voice if it sounds weird. I kind of think it sounds more manly. So, no, no, you're yeah. wrong. Mm. No, you're wrong. No, no. I sound like, uh, like a radio disc jockey. No, no, no. You sound Traffic like, and weather on the nines. No, you sound like you smoke two packs a day. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> Just say it. That's <laughs> what you sound know. like. <laughs> Shut up. So uh, what are we talking about here out, out on the back porch today? What I mean, it's a nice day. The sun mm-hmm. is out. What sunny topic are we going to talk about? <laughs> Reprobation. Ooh, that sounds nice. No. It, it sounds like uh, like some kind of sauce that you would cook in a skillet and then pour over some fancy dish. 
It's yeah, rep- first you the take, reprobation. Yeah, first you go ahead and uh, take your steak. Mm-hmm. You sear it on both sides. Right. Go ahead and get your reduction of reprobation. Oh, yeah, like just that. just go ahead and spoon it across the top Just there. a little bit, though. Just a little bit. Because too much reprobation, you know, it's a little bitter. It's a little bitter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about reprobation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it comes up from time to time, especially critics of of Calvinism, people that uh, are uncomfortable with the doctrines of election as we teach them as in the Reformed tradition. So, Joe, I mean, let's just get right into it, man. What What is reprobation? Well, reprobation, um, as, as taught in the Reformed tradition, is uh, an aspect of predestination. It's, it's one part of God's sovereign activity as it relates to uh, the human condition and all of humanity. And so when we're talking about predestination in this way, we're talking about election on one hand yeah, and yeah. reprobation on the other. Neither it's, of these are popular topics. Not well. It depends. I mean, well, they're actually. I don't know. They're pretty. They're, they're pretty popular on the traditionalist part of uh, the Facebook page. Okay. How about this? People don't really like these things. They, they, not really. Should we they, say that, or maybe they don't d- agree? They, well, sometimes? they don't agree. Yeah. And they don't like our doctrine, our, our understanding of it, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a plane flying over. If you guys are wondering yep, what that so is. So election and reprobation. Right, well, it's two know, sides. Election on the one hand, we know what that is. This is God's sovereign choice of some. Uh, to be forgiven of their sins, mm-hmm. um, you know, received into heaven. It's it's God's choice to give a specific people yeah. to Jesus, and those people are the ones who will be uh, regenerated and justified and adopted and sanctified and glorified, and so on it goes. So election is God's choice of some to save. This is neither deserved yep. nor earned in any way. It is not merited. No, no, it's nothing that we... God knew we were going to do beforehand. Right, right. And uh, and then reprobation is not the choosing of some uh, for something. It is the passing over of others. So election, God's choice of some to save, reprobation is essentially leaving others in their sin and deciding before they begin, before you know time begins, deciding in eternity past that there are these others mm. whom God will create but will not receive saving mercy. So reprobation isn't so much something that God is doing yeah. uh, actively as much as it is something that God is not doing. He's passing over, not giving some saving grace. So reprobation, you could say it's it's God's choice to pass over others Um, or to pass over specific people and um, not extend to them saving grace. So like thinking of Proverbs 16, 4. Right. Right? Where it says, The Lord has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. So there's still that sovereign uh, choice of God to choose some and yet pass over others. Right. We can see that God is sovereign over all of these things. Um, And this is really what we see, that God is sovereign over all things, salvation, damnation, and everything else. And we know that it doesn't make God to be a um, a monster or anything like that. Um, People are responsible for what they do. For example, in in 1 Peter 2, verse 8, speaking of those that reject the gospel, um, Peter says they stumble, these people who stumble, stumble over Jesus, they stumble because they disobey the word. Now that's their, what they do. They're responsible for that. This is their rejection. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. Mm. So you've got God's sovereignty and man's responsibility. Men are free agents acting in accordance with their nature, doing what they want to do, and yet everything that's happening is happening in accordance with the sovereign will of God. So, I mean, people would call this, though, double predestination, right? Like, wouldn't yeah. they kind of refer to that? If God is choosing some uh, for eternal life, is then God not choosing others right. to eternal uh, damnation? Yeah, it's it's this, uh, it, God predestinates is the way some people would yeah. say it. God predestinates yeah. some to salvation, and he predestinates others to damnation. Um, and so there's, there's a sense in which, like, you can talk about double predestination in that way, and it might not be wrong. But the way that term is generally used, it's used by critics of election or, or of reformed theology, I should say, and um, and they find it they they find it distasteful because it it looks like when they put it this way that they are treating election and reprobation as if they are. Um, equal. Yeah. In other words, so when God saves somebody, he's doing he's doing things. So he's chosen them, right? He has loved them in a special way. He re- regenerates them and he um justifies them and sanctifies them and preserves them and It's an active movement. Right. It's it's all of these things. And um reprobation though is not on par with that at all. 
Because in reprobation, God is not doing anything. He is, he is simply passing over. It, it, reprobation is God's choice in eternity past not to give them saving grace, but to allow them to, to carry out the desires of their heart and to earn their own condemnation. So God doesn't have to do anything in reprobation. He has to not do something and just allow justice, his justice, mm. to roll. Whereas in election, justice is still carried out, but it's carried out through the substitute. It's carried out through the Savior. See, I've never thought of it in those terms, though, right? Like, I've never thought in this, those terms of God acti- actively moving and then God uh, passive. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, I never thought of it in those terms. Why is that important, though? Like, why is that distinction important when we're talking about reprobation and election? Well, because it... In the minds, in the minds of some people, um, when they when they think about this, they're saying, Look, "Well, God, you know, simply made people and throws people into hell because He wanted okay. to." So it's like God. Uh, in other words, here's the thing: there's a difference between reprobation and condemnation. So they kind of equate the two. Some people equate the two. Reprobation is God's choice to to withhold something that they that these people don't even deserve. They don't deserve his mercy. Nobody does. Nobody they don't deserve does. his grace. And he, instead of, um, instead of going after them with a peculiar love and saving them and doing all these things, he simply says, I'm going to let you do what you want to do without any interference on my part. And um, then you will be condemned for your actions. So in other words, you can think about it like this. The reason somebody goes to heaven or the reason somebody is eternally reconciled to God is because of what God did. But the reason people go to hell is not because of what God did. It's because of what they did. They've earned it. They've merited it. And they will get what they've essentially asked for. And and if it wasn't for the grace of God, we'd all be in that same position. I think that's that distinction you're trying to make. Yeah. So it's not, um, they're, they're just not the same thing at all. They are, they are very um, different in terms of what God is doing in that. So reprobation, the what what is done in eternity past mm-hmm. condemnation, which is what happens uh, on account of their sins in the end. That's the fundamental difference. So God, I mean, like if so, Joe. I mean, if you were to choose, then like if you had the choice, and if you were to choose on uh, your own Father's Day gift, if you were to choose that gift, what where would it come from? All right. Well, if I it, I can choose any gift, any gift. All right. Any gift, and wh- wh- where where does it come from? That's that that's what probably I want. Smith and Wesson. I'm Smith and Wesson. No, okay, wait. Uh, yeah, you mean like something something that normal people can afford? That's it. What normal oh, well, people easy. can afford? All right. Well, then uh, mission aware. Obviously. Oh, that's a great obviously. idea. Obviously. Where else would they go? You know what I mean? Where else are they going to go? That's it. I mean, Father's Day is coming up. Yeah. You know, you want some mission aware swag. You know, you want those tumblers. You know, you want those rocks glasses. You know, you want. Those T-shirts yep. and those hoodies, journals and those mugs and those journals, pets. They don't have animals. Pets. They ain't got animals. They're selling animals now. No, he sells everything. <laughs> he does sell everything. He is not in the animal oh, market. Oh, all right, not yet. Not yet. Okay, not yet. So listen, uh, ladies, guys, tell your ladies you want something from missionaware.com, and so you want to head on over to missionaware.com slash doc and devo. You can use the promo code Doc and Devo and save ten dollars off any order over fifty dollars. Right. Get that gear. If you spend forty five dollars, you, you ain't don't, getting it. You don't get that. Discount. You might as well bump it up. Get yourself a, a journal and bump it up over fifty, and it comes back right back down. Yeah. To forty five anyways. Boom. Boom. That's that's pretty good deal. That's I like a, that. I think that's a great deal. Are it's you like a gonna, free journal. Are, are you going to get me something for Father's Day? Not you. Why would I give you something? Because I'm a dad. Not my dad. Who's your daddy? <laughs> So, Joe, we talk about... (laughs) If you were going to get me a gift, though. If I was to get a gift, you honestly want to know what I'd get you? What would you get me? I would get you cigars. All right. Did they sell cigars at Mission Aware yet? No, no, not yet. All right, get on that, Jeff. Get on that. All right, reprobation, the difference between reprobation and condemnation, they're they're not the same. Right. One is, uh, it's an act of punishment. The other one is, is God passing over Mm -hmm. uh, and not acting in his... uh, his sovereign choice to not act. Right. He's in, not rec- he doesn't life. have to do it. He's not rec- Where do we get off telling God how he's supposed to act? I, I, I don't understand this. I don't understand. Like, you know, Paul deals with this nonsense in, in Romans 6. Okay. okay. Or, I'm sorry, Romans 9. He gets, into, he gets into this in Romans 9, and he says, like, don't talk back to God. 
You can find fault. You can point the finger. You can do all this stuff. But in the end, God is God, and he's going to do what That's he right. pleases. That's and right. And just because you can't conceive of a God that would do X, Y, and Z doesn't mean that God doesn't do X, Y, and Z. We have and to if come- you could conceive of a God, then is that really God? Right. I mean, is, is, do you really expect God to agree with you? All the time on everything. If, if God never frustrates you, if God never disappoints you, if God never, if, if the truths that God reveals in His Word don't challenge you, then I, I have a hard time thinking that you're actually reading the Bible carefully. Yeah, read the the psalmists are always annoyed and frustrated and like like God, where are you? You're not here. This isn't right. They're trying to figure it out. You know, the, in 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 the Old Testament, frequently you see these prophets like Habakkuk saying. God, I need to know what you're doing. And yeah. God's like, you ain't going to like it. And he says, well, I need to know. He's like, you can't handle it. He's like, I can handle it. Tell me what you're going to do. Okay, I'm going to raise up the Chaldeans, and I'm going to bring them in to bring punishment to Israel. God, I don't like that. No, that you can't do that because you're God. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. I'm God. I can do what I want to do. And then I'm going to punish the Chaldeans for what they did, even though I used them to do that very thing. Mm. So I, I just I don't, I don't understand this, this, this outright angry rejection of these things. I get theological differences, but I don't get this outright angry rejection of these things based on, well, I can't conceive of a God doing that. I don't think that's a legitimate argument. I think that shows that you are creating God in your image rather than allowing God to reveal himself. And if we are, if we are individuals that uh, do believe in election, and the flip side of that being reprobation— uh, what? How should that be lived out then in our lives, right? Like, what should that elicit out of us? I mean, it shouldn't be arrogance, right? No. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be uh, pride. It shouldn't it's, be, you right. know, condemning and, and judging others. I mean, there's got to be something that that it. it, it well, you and I have talked about this. Up. You and I have talked about this before. Um, you know, as we're considering the sovereignty of God, and and and, and you get these these sort of um, I don't know uh, caricature unfair sort of um, assessments of what we probably do or how, how we probably respond to these things like, well, obviously, if you believe in an election or reprobation, you don't share the gospel. Why would you need to? You just, like, God just does his thing. And, of course, this is not only ignorant of the history of Reformed theology and church history itself, yeah, but absolutely. Um, it, it's also putting words in our mouth that we would not say because we do not make that conclusion. Um, we, you know, we're encouraged in evangelism in this. But I think in terms of our personal experience, there's a few things that come to mind uh, for me. One, one of them is humility. Um, and I just preached on humility again today um, in, in light of the incarnation. And humility is not something that naturally exists in us as sinners. It, we, we're very prone to self-sufficiency, um, yeah. you know, creating our own self-identity. Uh, we think a lot of ourselves, and it, particularly in America, we, we just we like this idea that I can do it, I'm the man, um, I can get it done, and I, I don't— Pull myself up by my bootstraps. Right, exactly. You know, like, we really don't like the idea of a handout. Like, I don't I don't want help. I don't, you know, we like the idea of the self-made man. Yeah. The guy, yeah. like, you know, like that guy, like Survivor Man. You know Survivor Man? Is, it, is that Bear Grylls? No, the that's guy the that fake— his... No, that's the fake guy. The guy's a total phony. What, does so, Survivor Man drink his own pee? No, because that was fake. Does he drink elephant pee? No, that was fake. Survivor Man— um, Les Stroud, Survivor Man um, was the guy. It, there's no camera crew. There's no production tent. There's none of that. It's just him and the camera that he brings, and he gets dropped in the middle of nowhere. Dude winds up losing 30 pounds because he's stuck out there for so long. This guy is a real survivor. Now you look at this guy and you think like, now that that's not like that fake Bear Grylls. Bear Grylls is a handsome guy. Uh, Survivor Man's ugly. He looks like us. <laughs> but Survivor Man, we like to say you put that guy out there and he can just do. He's like Rambo, right? Um, uh, without the speech impediment. And, 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 oh, and, and, Joe, no. no! I'm just saying he's like that. <laughs> so he he goes out there and and you're like that guy can just he doesn't need anything. Mm-mm. But he is still relying on everything that God has furnished for him in that wilderness. Yep. So there is no such thing as a person who is entirely self-reliant. You are always relying on something else. And ultimately, at the deepest level, we're all entirely dependent upon God for all things. And we, we tend to miss this. And so humility is birthed when we begin to see our smallness, our corruption, God's greatness and his holiness yeah. and his generosity. And so when I see that I would be condemned were it not for God's choosing, saving uh, activity in, in, in eternity past, it promotes humility. And everything else that follows with that, all of God's saving work, and, and when I consider reprobation that God could have passed over me, and that would have been just, it would have been good. It would have been right. Yeah, but he did something even bigger than that in saving a number so great that no one can count. And so I think, I think it should produce in us great humility, recognizing that I don't deserve mm. the salvation that I have, 
And the only difference between me and another person on, on that deep level is not that I'm better, but that I was shown mercy. And so it developed this hum- humility and compassion yeah. uh, sort of begin to, I think, build together. And I think it should also elicit praise, right? right like right. Th- this, this worshipful heart towards God that who are we, like you said, that humility, uh, it should, it, when we see how low we are and how undeserved we are, it just magnifies how glorious and great and loving and forgiving and merciful God right. is. Yeah, praise that manifests itself in thanksgiving, that is public yep. song, that is loud. I mean, th- we should be known as not just a humble people, but a, a not praiseful, what would that be? Worshipful? Worshipful. Praiseful. <laughs> Praiseful. <laughs> Worshipful. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I mean, why aren't we known uh, for this? Why aren't yeah. we known for this sort of, um, maybe maybe some are, but I feel like most of us aren't. I think we're too afraid to say things. Like, I, remember, I remember one time I was hanging out with all these dudes, and um, but we were pretty new Christians, and uh, something really amazing happened. God was doing something cool. And everybody's like, sort of like, yeah, man, that was so great. And I went, yeah, man, hallelujah. <laughs> and it got real quiet. Everybody stared at me. And I was like, what I say? And they're like, hallelujah, dude. <laughs> and I was like, well, that, that doesn't sound like you. No. I, well, I don't say it now. Everybody made fun of me. Oh, I wouldn't make fun of you. Uh, well, yeah, you would. No. Yes, you would. No. Really? No, I wouldn't. Oh, well, hallelujah, man. That's cool. Really, dude? Oh, Come what? on. That's stop, not, Joe. That's not cool, dude. Why would you do that to me? <laughs> I say praise God. Um, so, uh, yeah, but we should we should be known. I think I think you're right. And one of the other things that I'm thinking about here is that um, if this is, and I believe this is true, if this is true, then it should create in us a deep sorrow. Yeah. And and, and, and we should mourn over the seriousness of sin. I mean, sin is not a small thing, and it it results in condemnation. Either Jesus was condemned, or we will be condemned. For our sins, that that's that's those are the only options here, and so it should produce a, a deep mourning for sin in our lives. As Christians, we know that our sins um, were paid for by Jesus in His death, and we should mourn the sins of others because we see that they are in such grave danger, yeah. and and we should mourn not just for the. Um, the eternal aspects of it, which are the most significant, but also even the temporal aspects of it, the harm that it's doing to people made in God's image here today. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, th- I think that, that the doctrine of reprobation is one of those doctrines that is hard. It's uncomfortable. No, yeah. And we've got to do something with these passages. There are many others. We, we, we've got to do something with the, this doctrine. And on the one hand, we need to be careful to only speak where Scripture speaks. Yes. Um, we, 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 want to be, we don't want to be arrogant in this. Uh, and maybe I fall into that sometimes, and when I do, I, I shouldn't. I need to be called on it. But it isn't arrogant to say the Scripture teaches this. It isn't arrogant to make an assertion. Um, but in the midst of all this, we, we should be listening to each other. Um, we should be seeking to have a better understanding of Scripture. And I think that the the more we can have dispassionate talk about these things and, and, and let the Scripture be clear and, and then try you know, there 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 is a picture being painted in all of scripture and so yeah. we're trying to sort of connect these dots and and put it all together in a way that makes sense and this is in my estimation an important doctrine maybe not as important as other do- uh, some other doctrines but I think this is an important doctrine that we would do well to rightly understand believe and even teach I do think we need to teach it um, as those passages uh, come to play, mm-hmm. uh, come to bear on um, our congregation in various ways. One of the, one of the things that um, we want to encourage people to read is uh, Lorraine Bettner's The Reformed Doctrine of Predestination. Yeah. And in, yep. in that book, he, he says this, and I'm just going to read a, a paragraph and a quote that he um, has from uh, Toplady here. He says, Let it be remembered that we are under no obligation to explain all the mysteries connected with these doctrines. We are only under obligation to set forth what the scriptures teach concerning them, and to vindicate this teaching so far as possible from the objections which are alleged against it. The, yea, Father, for so it was well pleasing in thy sight, was to our Lord an all-sufficient theodicy in the face of all God's diverse dealings with men. The sufficient and only answer which Paul gives to vain reasoners who would penetrate more deeply into these mysteries is that they are to be resolved into the divine wisdom and sovereignty. The words of Toplady are especially appropriate here. Say not, therefore, as the opposers of these doctrines did in St. Paul's days, why does God find fault with the wicked, for who has resisted his will? If he, 
who can who only can convert them refrains from doing it what room is there for blaming them that perish seeing that it is impossible to resist the will of the almighty be satisfied with saint paul's answer nay but o man who art thou that repliest against god the apostle hinges the whole matter entirely on god's absolute sovereignty there he rests it and there we ought to leave it and then bettner comes back to say man cannot measure the justice of god by his own comprehension and our modesty should be such that when the reason for some of God's works lies hidden, we nevertheless believe him to be just. If anyone thinks that this doctrine represents God as unjust, it is only because he does not realize what the scripture doctrine of original sin is, nor to what it commits him. Let him fix his mind upon the existence of real ill desert antecedent to actual sin, and the condemnation will appear just and natural. So I... To me, I think, you know, Bettner says it well, this takes serious, sober thought. It yes. takes time. Yep. Um, and some doctrines do require more maturity to understand than others. And I'm not suggesting that Calvinists are inherently more mature than non-Calvinists. That's not what I'm saying. But some doctrines do require a greater level of maturity to handle. There is meat. There is meat and there is milk. There is solid food and there That's is milk. Right. That's and right. And so some things are easier to get and to digest and others are harder. This is one of the harder passages. And so I think as we consider it, we ought to be serious, we ought to be sober, and we ought to consider all the views and then take this one. <laughs> this is, I think, the right one. <laughs> is the biblical, biblical one? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Jimmy, if people want to um, support the podcast, what can they do? You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head on over to the website, DoctrineDevotion.com. You can sign up for our email list. You can contact us there. You can also hit up the store and grab yourself some uh, some merchandise, some merch. I was about to say swag, but it's not really swag. It's, it's merchandise. Uh, you can leave us an honest five-star review over on the iTunes. Fresh Pod every Monday and Thursday. Blog posts on Wednesdays. Something on Friday soon. Later. Later.